Everybody saw the first season? I hope so. If you haven't, watch it and watch it all the way to the end because that, those last scenes when you guys came back and through each one of your characters you portrayed a different emotion or a different um, uh, experience that is very common to everybody that comes back from downrange. And the way you guys did that through your character's eyes was, uh, I mean, that's what stands out to me the most from that first season. So uh, thank you guys for what you did with, with that. Thank you. Uh, so what we're going to do, so you, guys, you guys are tired of hearing me talk, so we want to hear a little bit from, from these guys. So I have a couple questions for you, and I want you to jump in on anybody else's question if, uh, if you want to uh, add a little bit or uh, make fun of them a little bit, or whatever, it, whatever it may be. So, uh, so I'm going to start with, uh, with David. So Jason Hayes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to start with, uh, I, got a couple, I got a couple for you. Um, one's a little bit generic. And then I got a couple other ones, but uh, so you have some experience, obviously, in uh, in television. If you guys didn't know, he's been on TV before. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, what drew you to this particular role? What made you say yes when that uh, that call came in for the second or third time? Well, uh, I was blessed to be able to sit down with uh, a fantastic director, producer, Chris Chulak, who enabled me. Yeah quite honestly, to uh, have a meal, and we just kind of discussed, uh, you know, directing, and I just had come off a series, and uh, we had talked for about 45 minutes, and um, I started getting a little antsy, and I found out that we were waiting for somebody else to come join us, and I looked at him, and I said, can we order, because I'm starving, <laughs> and so we got the dinner, right, and uh, we kind of had a general meeting overall, and uh, Soon after that, I uh, was approached by CBS and the great people there, and they uh, sent me a script, and Chris thought I would be good for this role. Um, and some circumstances uh, kind of went another way, and I decided to kind of gracefully deny that. And, uh, and I told Chris that, uh, you know, I, I, maybe this will come back around. Maybe this will come to back to fruition. Cut to, long story short, they're shooting the pilot, and uh, they had a couple of things that kind of went astray, and uh, I get a call. I was on a Sunday, I was watching <laughs> some sports, and they're like, would you be interested in going back to, uh, you know, revisit this character? And at the, over the weekend, I was talking with my wife, we were at the Kings game, of all places, and uh, I was like, did I, did I make the right decision here? I mean, I, I kind of felt this character inside, that, that there was an opportunity to kind of find something with him, um, not only from a military aspect, but really from an emotional vulnerability aspect. Um, bringing something of this magnitude to uh, a series would, I know would be very arduous and daunting. And she said, you know, you, uh, you made a decision, let's see what happens, and lo and behold, um, that conversation started to kick up again after that phone call on Sunday, and three days later, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm throwing down on a, on a big cargo ship and I got all of this gear yeah. on me. In the water. It, yeah, <laughs> and I can't see. And almost died. I'm stuffed in you pretty almost, tight. You almost, almost died. I almost died. <laughs> almost died. I almost, almost died. died. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that was, uh, that was because you I was. You actually said, I was supposed to be in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I'm doing this. And then I, and there was, I, I wanted to do the jump from the bow of the ship. And they're like, and Mark was like, who was doubling me, said, you'll crack your neck. That's not going to happen. So um, we picked up me and basically in the water. And I'm going after my friend who we just had kind of went a little bit far with the mission. And there and behold, um, I'm swimming. I got all my gear on and I'm dumping hard. <laughs> I got a seven millimeter wetsuit on and I'm feeling the Louisiana River just suck me dry. <laughs> and I got gear and I'm sinking and I'm going, I'm out. Help me. I'm that, out. Help. I'm, I'm out. out. I'm out. I'm out. I was like, I don't there think, you go. He's not hearing I me. Think he, I don't think that's the line. So the, think, the, the guy on the ship who was uh, helping us, uh, the point guy, said, I'm out. And the, 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 these guys who were supposed to pick me I up, Tyler was, and Justin, they, just, they flew yeah, by me. Really into it. And I said, shit, they're out. <laughs> this guy's not getting me, and I'm really going out. Yeah. I, said, I, can't, I can't go down right now. <laughs> so I proceed to go to my right to go back to the boat that turns around to pick me up. Tyler and Justin throw me in. I crack my nose. I'm bleeding. Yeah. Right? I'm, yeah. like, I'm suffocating. I'm going to get this shit off me. I'm like freaking out. I think I'm dying. <laughs> I got like, like an anaconda around my heart yeah. right now, and I'm suffocating. <laughs> And, now, and I, really quickly, these two here are like, shit, Boreanaz, he's a good actor, man. He's, man, he's, he's really drowning. He's really, he's, he's committed. I said, he's like this guy. Yeah, yeah right? I don't think he'll be a scripted, but I believe it. I believe, I believe him. Everything. That wasn't in the line. Well, I was line, really, I like, suffocating. I was going down. <laughs> so get back to the ship. And AD said, um, you know, we got to get, get you back and clear it up. I'm bleeding. I said, no, F it. Let's go. 
let's go. And I had Mark Owens on the end of the boat, dark shadow, looked at me and said, okay, it's our guy. We went out, completed the scene, long story short, we, sh we, sh we shot this great pilot. Oh, it was great, and, it brought uh, us all together. Yeah. You know, it was a brotherhood. Yeah. And, and, and for me, it was, uh, Chris, Chris always said, you'll get it when you're here. You'll get it when you're here. And I got it, and I'm blessed to be amongst all these people here and go in every day to work with such a fantastic group of brothers and sisters and, and people that uh, shape you in a different way. And uh, uh, I'm happy to be, be here. Well, I just, want to, I just want to say I'm glad you didn't die because the director's the guy that goes to jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would suck. Awesome. Thanks for saying yes. And this might be the, uh, similar, but what was, what's the hardest mental thing you've had to deal with? Not physical, but what's the hardest mental part of shooting this show last season or this season? Uh, failure, I bring up failure in a sense of being able to drive and compartmentalize your, your sections and your series and what you're thinking about. As a, as a leader, you, you really are, comp you have so much going on in your brain and in your heart. The balance, the vulnerability, being able to shut it off, being able to drive on target and attack, which what we're gonna do ultimately as a team. You're only as strong, strong as your weakest link. You keep that together, and you have to be able to drive through that. Um, and failure is not an option. And I talked to somebody about that. We had talked about somebody about that. And I think that's the biggest fear is really is afraiding, uh, scared of failing that that mission. And when you're in it so hard with the reality of it, and uh, it becomes so challenging and difficult. You know, those adversities. And when you kind of separate that and when you go back home, the sense of vulnerability of being able to kind of tap into some dark shadows and moments to be able to connect with that emotional aspect across from you. Um, it's a great series to see for the military aspect of it, but the vulnerability of it when we get back home and I'm not there for my, my girl's recital or if I'm not there for my little kid who just ran bases or if I'm not there for a moment to tuck him in is a very shedful emotional moment, especially in a relationship with my wife, is very difficult for that character. And uh, they're tough to balance, and it's hard, and it's raw, and I, and I appreciate the, uh, what, what John does with the writing aspect of it to push that. I, I work with a great person named Ivana Chubbuck who allows me to kind of feel those emotions and balance that. So I need to find that balance, and that, that's a very difficult thing to do. Thanks for saying yes, and you're, uh, you're crushing it, so. Uh -huh. yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, uh, Max, dude, great to see you again. It's been yeah. a few years, <laughs> so it's great to catch up again. Um, and uh, yeah, congratulations. This is the last time we saw each other. It's been a few years, but congratulations on uh, all you've accomplished. And Thank you. Particularly on the wine. I want to get into more of that with you later. Yeah, you got to get some Vita going. Sans is wine, yeah. wine yeah. baby. Let's do that for sure. Sans right uh, now. <laughs> so I um, want to talk a little bit about uh, the weapons training you did to get ready for this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you do it with Mark or uh, you do it continually with the show or you do a little boot camp beforehand. And then uh, the hardest physical thing, either last season or this season that you've had to do. Uh, well, I started with my own weapons training when I was about 10 and I asked my parents to send me to outdoor camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I learned a lot then. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, the guys that we have with us, um, Mark, Tyler, Justin, um, Foxy, you know, all these guys, Garrett, everybody just, I mean, you know, I kind of, I, I sort of joke and I say it's kind of like, it's like getting to like play horse with like Michael Jordan, you know, like when, you, when you're there and you get to see these guys um, and how they use their guns and um, how they move, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's surreal. So when you kind of can just soak some of that up, I mean, that's, that's really where it all comes from, yeah. you know, and we, we try and work with it, you know, as much as we can and um, you know, focus on the little nuances and the little things that they do, you know? I mean, like a lot of people know how to, you know, shoot a firearm and, you know, um, change a mag and do those things, but to see how they, you know, kind of just move is, is really what it's all about. Yeah, check. How about the hardest physical thing you had to do last season or this? Dude, I, I, did, the, uh, I did the O course last year. And um, <laughs> what's that? Coronado? No, we, did, we built one, and they built, the wall they built was like, you know, instead of being whatever it was supposed to be, like 15 Max, feet. Max, when I showed up, I was like, they got a stunt over for this, and the people was like, no. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> <you> this? <laughs> the wall the wall they built was like supposed to be like whatever it was like 15 or whatever yeah. and it was like 10 feet higher well it doesn't look big enough on camera yeah so i get to this wall and i'm like man this thing is no and joke it's hot. It's and really, the really you know hot. the weaver or the grinder or whatever like that was i mean working through that thing and i'm around a, everybody else is a bunch of stunt guys there's one other actor and you know, being stubborn and, and stupid, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna be the fastest one through this yeah. thing. Nobody's gonna be faster than I am through this thing. You like, works. forget all these stunt guys. And so, every take, I'm like, pound it in, let's go. You burned it. And uh, yeah, I mean, my body was, I was abused after yeah, this. You know, I had bruised, bru like, bruised on the inside of my inside. arms from the, the weaver. And um, after the first, you know, the, we got to the wall and the other actor, um, Jay Hayden and I, we hit the wall and we grabbed the rope and we started going up the rope. And he, he made it on the first try. And then the second try, he, he, like, he fell and he fell again. He was like, he was laughing his ass off. And he was like, dude, what are you doing right now? He's like, how are you getting up this thing? And I was like, I'm just, I'm stupid, man. I just, I, I got to do <laughs> no it. No tears. Um, so I think that was the, the physically the most challenging thing. Nice. For sure. It was fun, don't get me wrong. But. Yeah, you know, some guys in Buds, when they get to some of these obstacles, for some reason, they have a mental block and just can't get past something that somebody else just just blasts right through. So it's yeah. interesting to do that. And then, uh, favorite scene from last year? If you have one, or is it favorite scene from last year? Um, gosh, to be honest, there are so many. Just yeah. to me, it's like when we get the whole team together <coughs> and we get everybody involved in these these big um, ensemble scenes. Like for me, those are a lot of fun. And you know, there's there's so many days when we finish and we kind of all look at each other and maybe it's an op or something. And we kind of all we look at each other and we're like, dude, that was that was badass. That was <laughs> badass. Like you know, it's we're like a bunch of kids sitting there, um, kind of just with these big old shit eating grins on our faces. <laughs> like this is what we get to do and we get paid for it. This is awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Great job. All right, going down the line, Neil. What's up, man? Uh, so great to see you again too. And, you too, brother. Uh, shoulder surgery, so and injury. So if you get to talk to to Tyler, to to Mark, to Foxy, to Gary, any of these guys about uh, what happens when that. I mean, it's very common to get yeah, injured. Yeah, it's very common yeah. to yeah, say you're okay injured. and want to stay with your team and want to deploy with that team. Let's so also like, recognize that Jason has bad knees. I mean, he has an issue too. <laughs> like we not. No, I'm just. I'm, no, I'm saying that he, I got the shoulder. Romance. But his <laughs> knee, you know, he had the brace. He won't wear it. <laughs> but he, you know, and he allowed to operate. Continue, though. I'm with you. <laughs> Not only he, my he still knee, shows but up. my right shoulder, too. <laughs> you guys are falling apart. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but did you get to talk to any of those guys about that, about uh, how you want to stay with the team so bad that you'll... No, not necessarily lie, but you will definitely um, make it seem like your injury is not as bad as it is to go down. Oh, range. no, absolutely. So do you get to yeah. tap into some of those guys? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I've, I've, I've had conversations with all of them, and they're like, we all play hurt. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean you, you see it every day you watch the NFL. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Like, and these guys are doing it on this elite level, and really it could be your, you know, life or death, but, you know, they want to be in the game, and they, you know, they want to, they don't want to not be away from their teammates, from their brothers. It's not as much of a selfish thing. It's like, you know, they feel and know that, you know, if I'm not there, then my guy, my teammate, my brother, whether, whether it's Jason, whether it's Clay, or whether it's, you know, Sonny, is like, if I'm not there, then nobody's watching his back the way that I know I can. So I want to be there so we can complete the mission and do it right. Yeah. Um, and so I think that sends Ray into a, you know, a lot of, he's in his feelings about it. Yeah. You know, he messed up, you know, but, you know, it's not unlike what a lot of guys do. He, you know, he, he owned up. It was a little bit, he went a little too far with it, you know, um, but feelings, uh, he, he well, did. You he, got feelings, bro. Yeah, I got feelings, man. Oh, wow, okay. Come on, David. <laughs> yeah, I got feelings. That's David, have a go heart, man. Ray's, Ray's, got, Ray's got feelings about it. Have feelings. a heart, let him back. Because, you know, I mean, feelings. you know, he wants to be on the team. He wants to have his boy. Because yeah. it's know. always good for SEALs to have feelings. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, you got to know what hurts and what doesn't. I'm out with this. You know? <laughs> I struggle with that one. Yeah, that's the yeah. most difficult part. Yeah, of it, right. Yeah. I mean, 100. You know, it is. You got to kind of shut it down. That's a hard part. It's the difficult part, and that's what some of these people are here. You've yeah. done, and you. It's. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty. Uh, it to me, it's still jaw dropping. You hear yeah. stories. I, I still can't. I. I still, try to figure it all out. I talked to Tyler and we have great conversations about this and uh, and Mark and um, you know you can't really um, you can kind of hear it 
but you, you ain't lived it and you're really not understanding it, I don't think. And is it, uh, even though we know this is, we're acting here, but. No, no, we're not acting. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait a but second now, we, we are not acting. We are reacting. <laughs> but does it um, feel, does it really feel like you're getting left behind when you saw that first episode or when you were filming that episode, did it really feel like yeah, you're getting left behind? Yeah, hell yeah. Because you are, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah those you seem like you're Excuse my language, but those ones, they was out having a whole lot of fun. We were having a great time. Home. They were having a great time, and I'm I'm sitting at home. Ask my wife. I was like, I was like, yeah, I know it's we. Act, I know, I know, we playing pretend, but like they over there, and I'm over here, and I'm like trying, you know, I'm trying to see if I'm getting a text message from them in the Nothing. text. Nothing. Zero. They quiet, you know, Shut and I'm just like, and then when I see one of them, I was like, hey man, what's going on? No, and they're like, no. hey man, all right man. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we out here doing hard work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, it felt, uh, yeah, it, it felt. Yeah, I felt like I was on an island by myself, you know, and I just wanted to be with, with the guys. All you needed was a volleyball, and you're good to go. <laughs> it happened last season when I had to stay home that one, uh, the one mission because of the shoulder, because Jason said, no, you stay at home. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, I get some, some rest. But no, I just wanted, I kept calling. I was calling Max. I was like, hey, what, so what y'all doing? <laughs> what y'all what y'all do today? Did What'd you shoot? Yeah. What'd you shoot? <laughs> like, did you shoot anybody? Did you shoot anybody? Did you did you blow anything? What'd you up? do? <laughs> Come on, man, tell me the truth. No, it comes out because you guys are such a tight team. It comes across on screen, and then it came across in this episode. You being left behind, like your boys went out there without you. Oh you yeah, could, it was, yeah, 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 and it, it, and it hurt. I think it shows, so, man. So it's working. It's yeah, no, no doubt. Awesome, awesome. All right, we're gonna keep moving along. Hey, Jay, what's up, buddy? What's up, brother? <laughs> Great to see you again. So, uh, so we met at, uh, with Neil and Justin. We went out to a veterans uh, event out in Pittsburgh. And uh, you know, these guys showed up. And so many people showed up to thank them for the job that they're doing on this show, uh, veterans and their families, uh, active duty people and their families. Um, so it was really special spending that time with you guys out there. Likewise. Um, so did, uh, did Mark Owen ever tell you who your character was kind of based on? A little bit, yeah. Little I bit. met him. I met oh, yeah. him now, yeah. So I was just with him this morning, and so uh, obviously he's yeah. a great guy. Um, so uh, Sonny Quinn, uh, so of all the, the guys I talk to that, uh, that watch the show from the SEAL teams, um, most of, well, most of them uh, are your character. So they're that, <laughs> they're, they're, they are that, uh, that knuckle dragger, they're that sled dog, they're that, uh, you know, they're that, that guy, the workhorse, the, essentially the backbone of any military yeah. uh, to include the SEAL teams is that, uh, that E5, that E6 um, that's in there getting the job done every day and just can't wait to go and get it done. So uh, the way you portray that really, uh, I mean, it really, really resonates with, uh, with people. Um, so a question was, how did you do your research on Sonny, and how did you how do you portray that sled dog so well? And where did the Texas part come from? Uh, the Texas part was kind of a choice that I'd made prior to going to the audition. It kind of it stuck, but I would give a lot of credit to Tyler Gray for spending all the time with me that he has with, you know, just the character and the understanding of what it was. And, and Tyler would go, so the short story is. <laughs> And then he'd go into this very long story. <laughs> That's what I love about it. Yeah. So the short stories. Uh, but Tyler Gray yeah, really helped me sort of break down the character and, and uh, just to understand the complexity of like this sort of bravado and this. Te I mean, I'm, a, I'm originally from Dublin, Ireland. And it's, you don't it, say that, right? Uh, uh, how are you? Uh, so, <laughs> how are you? But, but, uh, <laughs> but it's so funny when I meet people in the service, it's usually in airports when you're traveling. And I would say, like, hey. And they're like, oh, I love the show. And then I. Don't have a Texas accent. They're like, look at me like I saw a ghost. I'm like, I'm like, hey, where's your accent? I'm like, I'm, I'm Irish. I'm from. <laughs> I know you're Texan, man. <laughs> you're like, Texan. What? You're not. You're not from the south. I'm like, no. But, uh, but yeah, the whole character, and then getting to meet the gentleman that the character was sort of loosely based on, and spending time with him, and yeah, it's just been, it's been a ride. I mean, it's, it, it's such a fun character to, to play. Awesome. And then he just steals things from me. He just he looks at me. He's like, Max is a redneck. So oh, that's actually, yeah, that, I, yeah, actually, that, that, actually, that's actually do you know what? I that's a hundred percent. I will look. <laughs> that's a hundred percent. I'll look. I didn't. I like. I liked cut shoes, but I never got into it. But Max and I, because we live in Manhattan Beach together, every day going to set. Max is like. We're listening to country the whole way out there. I was like, oh, hey, 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 country. Hey, I lost my dog. I want to drink some beer. Here we go. <laughs> but he's like, listen to the words, man. Listen to the words. And then he got into it. And then I go home to my wife. I'm like, you hear Kenny Chesney? 
<laughs> that's not really country, though. Yeah, I, yeah. I, did, I, did I like Kenny Chess. I had to tell my stage about only, that one, man. There's only two types of music. There's country and there's western. That's it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I do uh, even like uh, come down to some. Uh, Max taught me the word oak. He was like, he's like, you know, this country. You very. And I was like, well, what, do you, what will we do? And we like, kind of broke down. So, but yeah, it's 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 a character that you know is so much fun to you know put on his boots literally. Actually, the crazy part is that one of these, a gentleman, Bert from uh, Bison Union, mm -hmm. sent me his boots, uh, his uh, ranch boots that he's worn for 15 years. And he was like, hey, would you want to wear these boots on the show? So they're his boots. And he's a former Special Forces guy. And like, this is the greatest thing ever. And we've all had stories where guys, operators, have given us parts of things that they've actually been on, which to us is like, you know, brings you, gets you a little choked up when that sort of stuff happens. So, yeah, it's special, for awesome. sure. Yeah. Awesome. So I mentioned that uh, everybody at the end of last season portrayed a different coming home experience. And uh, for me, the one that resonated the most um, was yours. <coughs> and coming home, having everything going on for the, well, the whole season, but particularly that last episode. And when you're downrange, I mean, you're in it. And things are happening, you're planning missions, you're executing missions, you're doing things, and then you come home. Mm -hmm. And for me, yours uh, was really powerful. Uh, and it's the one I connected with the most when you just sat down and in silence. Mm -hmm. Nobody else around, nobody exploded, nothing exploding, your team's not next to you, you're alone, mm -hmm. and it's silent, but you're home. But it's not really your home because it's mm -hmm. your guys yeah. are your home, your team's your home. So how did you, what did you channel, how did you do that, and how did you make that so powerful just by sitting there? You probably uh, just sat there. That's probably uh, the answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I'll, I'll go back to Tyler Gray again. Like, it was, he wasn't even working that day. He showed up on set and was like, hey, end of the day, showed up. And we talked a, a bunch of other times. And the one thing that kind of stuck with me was that he said the most terrifying thing was silence. And when he would come home from a deployment, that if there was, you know, the cars outside honking or like it was just this, like, out of the thing. And he sat with me there on set the whole time and we just, walked it beat for beat, and I'd come in, I'm like, did I hit He's like, no, nah, you know, get a little deeper, this, that. So, you know, that's, that's Tyler Gray for that, for 100%. Awesome. Well done, Tyler. Yeah. All right. Tony, how are you? I'm good. How are you? What's happening? Good. All right. <laughs> uh, so first, hey, thank you for, I saw, I know you guys all do it. Everybody up here does it, but uh, thanks for what you did for the veteran home building thing. You and Judd oh, yeah. were down there, so I saw you guys <coughs> post about it. So thanks for uh, spending so much time doing that and then uh, you know, spreading the word about it. So Absolutely. really appreciate that. Um, and so for you, so your character, your character reminds me of so many amazing females that I've met downrange. Um, and it's just a different dynamic. So I don't know how exactly to put it, but it's a different dynamic when uh, a female is a part of a group of alpha males like this. And uh, I mean, you do such a good job portraying the very best of what I saw downrange and in the military um, oh, through your you. role here. Um, but my, so my question is, do you feel any added pressure being um, the military uh, female other than, than Jess, who's in intelligence? Um, we'll get to you in a second. But uh, any added pressure? Any added pressure uh, representing uh, being the, the one female Navy person. Not at all. I awesome. think I, it excites me. I didn't it excites I think, me. That's what I thought you'd say, by the way. <laughs> no, you know, I, I, well, a few things. I think that um, I, I grew up with um, all brothers, so that was something. And for some reason, I don't know something about my temperament, I tend to gravitate towards those roles. The very first television job I ever had was like the only female barber in the barber shop. So it's some, I always get to be the one girl with the, the boys for some reason. Um, but I think, especially right now, as the tides are changing in our industry and the world at large, it is such an incredible honor and excites me to tell these stories where women are sort of shifting to the forefront and navigating through these um, male-dominated uh, spaces. And I, I love to be couched with these particular humans because uh, you can see that there is the utmost respect and protection and um, uh, you know, friendship and family uh, that is at the cornerstone of our relationship. And so navigating work through that um, it just makes it really special. And I know that there are those gems of women that you're speaking of that are out there. So to be able to tell their stories in any small capacity um, makes me very happy. Got it. Now, you're doing an amazing job. And also job. to be with this woman, who is just a diamond. Yes, yes. Let me throw it to Jess. <laughs> 
All right, well, I'll move on to Jess then. Uh, actually, one more thing for you. So where do you, uh, your character going in future episodes and seasons? So the OCS angle uh, resonated with me also because I was prior enlisted. I know it's gonna. And I know, sorry. <laughs> and and uh, I know how at the end of that, that first season, you don't want to tell some people you're gonna go to OCS. That's so right. Some people in the military, if you say you're gonna go to OCS, it's like you're, you're leaving behind your last group and you're, you're uh, yeah, you're kind of changing color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, so you did a great job with that because I had to go through that myself. Tell some people, not others, and, and all that. And then, so where do you want your character to go? Where do I want my character yeah, to go? Yeah, do you want your character Does to go to matter? OCS? <laughs> Uh, we, we have a beautiful team of writers, you know, we have to sort of, uh, this is the fun of being an actor, is you have to be so detailed in the creation of these people that you're creating, so that you can execute your job each day. You have to know how much money's in your pocket, and how your morning was, and, uh, and, and so that you can move through the space in a, a detailed way. Uh, but also in those details, you have to be totally malleable, because you might get a script that morning, uh, the week before, something that changes your entire trajectory. Uh, so that is part of the, the tools that we have in our toolbox to execute this job. Awesome, awesome, great work. And Jessica, <laughs> research into your character, research intelligence side. So you're not part of the chain of command, or typically you're not part of the chain of command if you're in there from a, an intelligence service. So did, what did you, who did you talk to because there doesn't seem to be that many intelligence people on set. There are a lot of SEALs and special ops guys, but did you do any research uh, with well, anybody in particular? I, and I read a lot. I was given okay. the opportunity to speak with somebody at the CIA until they realized that I'm Canadian. So they're like, no, <laughs> no thank you, on your way. I'm Canadian. So cool story. I'm going for my biometrics on Monday. <laughs> Gonna be a citizen, guys. You um, should. Hi. <laughs> Actually, really, I have, I'm so nerdily excited about it. It's overwhelming. Awesome. But um, but uh, but so yeah, it's hard to get people who are uh, very secretive for a living to speak to you. Right. Awesome. Well, you're, um, you're doing a great job at it, so uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. Right, don't give away any secrets. Uh, <laughs> all right, Judd. Judd. At the end. Judd. Woo, Judd. All right. Judd. All right. Judd. So congratulations on becoming a, a season a regular, I guess it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, yeah. Although, uh, those of us not in the industry thought you were a regular oh, last season. So, um, Judd's going to cry. <laughs> So, uh, so for you, you have your role is what I did during my last few years in the military. So I'm that sorry. troop commander, no. task unit commander, uh, <laughs> that was, that was my job. Game. So. Right? Beard, beard game, game strong. Beard very game strong. strong. Very strong. <laughs> very strong. So uh, aside from the uh, the beard, um, what uh, what's your, uh, your your what are you most excited about uh, as far as being a regular now up here moving into season two? Oh man! Wow. Um, you know. I, Work-wise, you know, not, not much has changed because I was there for the entire first season. Um, I'm kind of excited to get to know the, you know, the first season. I take pride in the fact that Blackburn was always all business. You know what I mean? He was, he was just uh, the level-headed. Why is this? Why is it always my mic? I think it's rubbing on your beard, Doug. <laughs> is it the beard? Come on, man. I'll hold it. There we go. You got a lot of chest hair. Like the price is right. Yeah. Right? Come on down. Come on down. Um, Come on down. That's too close. So, um, yeah, so season one, I felt like he was really, as far as a character goes, you know, he was so laser focused on the job at hand, each and every episode, as far as uh, the obstacles, the, uh, you know, I learned that being a lieutenant commander, which I didn't know too much at the beginning. You know, it's one thing to Google it, right? Um, <laughs> and then I found out that when you ask others, because uh, I asked every, every guy I knew who was a special ops, tell me about your lieutenant commander. And then when I, when I showed up at set, I asked the, the guys that were there, the, uh, our consultants, our awesome consultants. But it was so funny because it was like a mixed bag. Like, no one person told me the same thing about the lieutenant commander. It was everything from like cake eater to like, you know, the backbone to like uh, pencil pusher, like, you know what I mean? It was all over the place. And throughout last season, I started really learning 
you know, what he does and the complexities of, he, he's literally overseeing this chess match, but the pieces keep moving and the squares keep moving around. And so I guess for season two, what I'm looking forward to most is uh, maybe finding out, you know, a little bit about the guy behind the work. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be in touch. So. Sounds good. Awesome, awesome. All right, John Glenn, <laughs> executive producer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so for you, what, so what drew you to the show and uh, what do you want to bring to it in season two? I just want to say, I, th I, I thought Judd was a, s a series regular, too. <laughs> it took me five weeks of work before I figured it out. I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> uh, the authenticity, you know, it felt really real to me. I think I've spent most of my life trafficking in daydreams, you know, inside my own head. And when I watched the first season, I came to it as a fan. And it's that intersection of, you know, who these people are when they leave home, these men and these women that serve the country and then who they are when they come back. And it's like a small little sliver for a writer, but it is a universe and a galaxy. And David drew me to it and Chris in particular drew me to it. I just, I, you know, I watched it, you know, I, like I said, I watched it as a fan and it, it, it felt so real. And so when they called me, I don't know, a few months ago and asked if I'd go out to lunch, I, I, got, out of, I got out of bed, I asked my wife, I go, should I do that? And she goes, you should, you absolutely go to that lunch. And I got out and I wore a, uh, you know, a, just a white muscle tee and jeans and I went to Banana Republic and bought a shirt. And, I, <laughs> and then I went and had lunch and that's, still, and that's my favorite shirt. <laughs> Good luck, Jerry. Yeah, it's just great. It's, it's great. I'm from Alabama, you know. I'm, I kind of grew up in a culture, you know, like this. My dad was Air Force and it was a very, uh, it was an opportunity to tell stories about people that I relate to. Yeah. And I had a bunch more questions, but I'm getting the one minute warning. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Chris, to you. Yeah. yeah. So, Chris, executive producer and director of the episode that we just watched. Um, so, uh, well, thank you for doing such a great job with that, that episode. And in one minute or less, take us. No, no, just <laughs> the director. For those of us that, don't, that aren't part of the industry here, can you describe uh, just what it takes to go from the beginning, get where we got here on the screen, from showing up with these guys uh, on set to getting to the end of that? What is that process like? Well, it starts with a great script. And uh, so that's, where we, that's our baseline. And, um, you know, for me, it's just finding the character stuff. The tactical stuff is the tactical stuff that we kind of grew into last year with, a, with the help of everybody. And, and, um, I, and what we try to talk about a lot is to whether, if there's a lot of action in a show, discover character through action, and it's just not shoot them up. It's trying to find the subtext uh, in that action. And then when they go home and there's the domestic stuff, it actually fills in all the, the blank spaces. And that's what the show's about. It's really about people who have really, interesting jobs and it's about their psyche, how they travel through society, how they travel through their own team world, how they travel through their domestic worlds and how things clash. And to study that and how, what kind of carnage that leaves sometimes. And um, that's what goes into something like this. Awesome. I think you encapsulated it perfectly. Right there. And Thank there's, you. there's with, I mean, I gotta say, Jimmy Miro, who's, you know, our yeah. DP. Our director is, of photography. Yeah. He yeah. really is. <laughs> this guy. He's kind, he's kind of an actor in the show because he's there with a the camera and he's working stuff out and he dances with all of them and, and he really gets in places that you can't get to without interrupting their flow. And, it, <laughs> and that's why I think the show or the series has a, a natural flow to mm -hmm. it, you know. Oh, amazing. Uh, and before we move on to, to drinks, I have two more things. And the first one is Justin, will you bring Dita up? Because yeah. 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 Well, one, because everybody loves the dog. And uh, two, because those dogs have done so much for us downrange. They've saved countless lives. And uh, to have one that is now a star of an amazing show like this yeah. is uh, pretty special. So. There we go. All right, Dita. Hey, 
girl. Take her bow. Hey, Dita. <laughs> <laughs> Can we uh, can we bring Tyler and Mark up, please? Too? Yeah, yes. Tyler, Mark, come on up. Yeah. Tyler, Mark, please. Thank you. I need uh, Spencer up here too, please. Spencer, Spencer, come on up. You know, Spencer. these guys really are a backbone, and uh, we would not be here. Please get up here. Awesome. All right. Uh, so hey, so everybody up here, I'm glad. Awesome, David. Thanks for bringing these guys up. Amazing. Um, so thank you all for what you do, uh, bringing this show to life. Everybody in uniform certainly appreciates it. And before we go to any after party or for, for drinks, uh, so it's getting kind of late here in, in Southern California, but it's, uh, it's, it's very late. early in other parts of the world. So in, uh, in Afghanistan right now, in Iraq, <laughs> so the, the sun's just coming up. And there's guys getting back, they're getting off helos, they're getting out of Hiluxes, they're getting out of Humvees, they're patrolling back to fobs, they're uh, coming back and they're sweaty and they're tired and sometimes they're bloody and we won't hear about it unless one of them doesn't make it back. So um, then they're gonna go right in to planning for the next mission, they're gonna reload their magazines, they're gonna take batteries and they're gonna put them in their nods, they're gonna put them into their flashlights, uh, they're gonna make sure they are ready to go if they get a call that comes in and they have to leave base. So that's what those guys are doing right now while we're here. So just wanted to, uh, to make sure we all remember them tonight. And thank you guys for what you do. Thank you, man. Thanks, everybody.